Hambini fans and welcome to another episode of the Shite and Sarcasm Engineering Show. In today's episode, quite possibly one of the most shocking things I've seen in quite some time. Where the fuck is the pen working? Ah, oh, Shimano gets reamed by US authorities. I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like this before, but anyway, we'll carry on. By Hambini, aged five. Now, if you haven't seen this video, you probably would be advised to go and watch it because we've actually been here before. So around about, I think it was maybe a year, 18 months, maybe two years, can't really remember. Um, my Shimano crank failed and I went through it in fairly rich detail to explain what I thought the problem was. Fast forward to today and Shimano, we better just check that pen's working. Ah, uh, the pen is working. I mean, I've just, I'm just, this is just unbelievable. So Shimano has recalled um, on the regulatory advice of the Consumer Product Safety Commission in the States, uh, 680,000 crank sets in the US, 80,000 in Canada. And I believe the total worldwide is like 2.8 million. That, <laughs> that's a scandal really. The, the bit that's even worse is they've known about it for 11 years. So these cranks were manufactured from 2012. I imagine the failures didn't start too long after that. And it's now taken until 2023 and they've now, you know, taken that on board. This is just a breakdown of, uh, of the the stuff that you probably have seen, maybe read in other places. Um, th this fourth term, I think is almost a given. I think there'll be plenty of people, especially in the US, who start a class action because 11 years is, is unreal. <laughs> it's just unreal. I mean, I've seen my fair share of recalls on, uh, on other equipment, but 11 years uh, and they've kind of denied it for all though for all that time i mean even the bike magazines i mean they haven't really um pointed the finger too hard but they have pointed a finger um bike radar to name one um but yeah just unreal there is another thing that you need to be aware of which is this bottom line which is they said they won't replace any crank unless there's evidence of delamination. Now, I think they should just go and replace them anyway, but I suppose they're trying to mitigate their loss. Realistically, it, whoever has a crank, it's gonna fail. It's just a point of when it's gonna fail. Um, so yeah, there we go. Uh, this was actually sent to me by a bike shop today. So even in the UK, um, the Shimano distributor is a company called Madison who are based in um, uh, Milton Keynes, not, not far from Absolute Black, actually. Um, they are, uh, uh, they've issued a, a, a notice for uh, you to take your crank back and they'll have a look at it and then they'll, they'll um, replace it or do whatever. I suspect the same thing applies uh, across Europe. There is a helpline which is further down in this um, note that was sent and it's in two languages. There's one in English and one in Dutch. So Shimano's, I think European headquarters are in the Philips campus in Eindhoven. Just to give you a bit of background, the main reason for all these failures is the way these cranks are manufactured. So they're effectively two pieces. So you've got this the, on the crank arm side, let's say you've got this. Um, and I, I couldn't remember if you go back to the video, if this was cast or forged. Now I would have thought it would be forged, but looking at the imperfections on it, I, I almost thought it was cast. I still, to this day, I'm still not sure. I, would, I don't think you'd be able to get the strength from it, but yeah, it's, you know, bit bit uh, unsure on that one. Shimano um, cranks usually have a steel axle, which is this bit here, um, and the rest of it is aluminium. And then they kind of like 
peen the end over of the steel. You can see the steel is relatively untouched and there's hardly anything on it. The uh, aluminium is corroded to fuck and that's because preferentially you set up a battery and the, uh, the corrosion attacks the aluminium. Um, not much really you can do about that. Uh, now on my bikes I, I've had three failures and they'll all be undocumented. Uh, I switched to 105. So 105 has a welded um, crank arm. It's slightly heavier, but do you really want this happening to you? And that's the kind of thing I've said for a while. Um, there's this endless pursuit for lightweight. Well, if you end up with 6,000 failures, uh, six people have had serious injuries and God knows how many broken bones and stuff like that, I just don't think it's worth it. Right, these things will increase your risk of failure. So obviously wet and salty weather, um, okay, salt on the roads, you need a few things for galvanic corrosion to occur. So you need dissimilar metals. So we've got steel and aluminium. Also, you need an electrolyte. So typically water, um, and that's for the ions to transfer. High relative humidity. Um, so typically, if your relative humidity is below 60% for steel, you won't really get any corrosion. Um, it's, it's actually 30%, but up to 60%, um, they say the, the corrosion rate is so low that it's kind of just like ignored. For aluminium to steel in a galvanic capacity, I don't know what that is. And I have had a look, looking for literature searches and all that, couldn't find anything. So. Yeah, if someone knows what it is, then do let me know. All I can say is, if you ride along um, in wet weather, it's you know likely to to fuck up. And that, and the converse is true as well. So uh, if you're in the middle of a desert, it's very unlikely to corrode because you just don't a have the electrolyte, and b if you do get any water on it, it just evaporates straight away. And finally, this one, which a lot of people didn't know, is if you go spraying your bike with muck off or some other equivalent, I've just picked muck off because I had an MSDS sheet for muck off. Um, muck off has a load of salt in it. So inevitably salt water or the cleaner will get in through the crevices through capillary action. And then as it gets into there, it will accelerate the corrosion level. So. I've never suggested anyone use muck off. If you're going to do something, the car cleaner is probably better. Something like, um, is it Meguiar's? Something like that. They don't have salt in them because they don't want to take the paint off. Um, but they are quite a good uh, degreaser. The takeaways. I mean, it is just unbelievable. 11 years. I find that truly astonishing so I, I, just ridiculous now this is becoming increasingly important so in probably the last two years i've seen a lot more people take bike manufacturers and bike shops to the cleaners um and the courts i suppose in the uk and probably in the us they're starting to class bikes with the sort of same risk level as a car. Um, the bikes have lower speed and people perceive them to be lower risk, but you haven't got as many layers of protection on a bike. You've just got, you know, your skin and then the road and then you've got an injury. Whereas in a car, you've got, you know, side impact bars, 20 airbags, supplemental restraint systems, uh, ABS brakes, four tires, and moreover, a ton and a half of metal around you to protect you. So the chance of a personal injury in a car is probably significantly less, okay, the speed is higher, than a bike. So, you know, a mediocre uh, crash on a bike, you'll probably cut your hands or legs or whatever. Whereas if you have a bump in a car, what happens? The bumper breaks, that's about it. Um, so that is, that is happening. And I've seen, you know, bike shops where I mean, a great one is steering systems. So where they overtalk steering systems and they brake, I wouldn't go really near a steering system <laughs> to, to engineer parts for. So, um, 
yeah, I wouldn't go near them. The other thing is, um, you know, the, the specification of bikes, they are not coming as they are, you know, advertised. So they're going to the cleaners for that. Um, and yeah, various other bits and pieces. And th this, I don't think I use the word scandalous and shocking all that often because they're not, you know, abrasive enough, but you know, in a professional engineering capacity, this is pretty severe. Um, it's the 11 years really. So there's a fault that's been known about for 11 years. There's God knows how many, you know, posts on internet for, I wouldn't go by posts on internet forums, but there's loads of them, but there's at least three or four YouTube videos of which, you know, mine is one where it goes through in fairly you know, deep detail about what's happening and what's going on. And I think, you know, Shimano probably caused themselves some serious reputational damage. SRAM are probably rubbing their hands in glee. L2 are probably rubbing their hands in glee, but Shimano aren't. I think this will cost them severely. So they've got to go through all those cranks and then replace them. Uh, but I think a class action, probably even in the UK, is almost unavoidable because it's, it's been so long, 11 years. Right, that brings us to the end of this video. If you do have any uh, questions or comments, then please do leave them below. Um, thanks very much, and as always, keep banging your hairdresser.